I hope everybody's having a good week. I uh, thought I'd call this the Birch Bowl. Pretty simple title. We haven't covered Birch yet on the channel. Uh, Birch, of course, uh, is pretty plentiful around our area. Uh, it's a softer hardwood, so, you know, you have to have sharp tools when working with it, but it does sand quite easily, so it is forgivable in that manner. And I'm using a 5H David Ellsworth gouge. Um, again, I always start on the outside of the bowl. Little chatter there. Then I flatten the rim. And again, this is mounted on a glue block with hot melt glue. Still a little area needs to be turned away. Then of course move to the inside. Start the tool on its side. Once you get a shoulder for the bevel to, to rub against, then you can switch it over with the uh, flutes facing upwards. Just couldn't get that chatter to go away. I'm also asked a lot, you know, what lathe speed I turn at. And basically the way I do it is uh, I turn the lathe on. I turn the speed up. My lathe is variable speed uh, till the wood starts to vibrate. And then I back it off till it smooths out. And that's basically how, you know, I try to turn it at the highest possible speed that I can because that will usually give you um, a nicer cut. Checking for thickness here. Yeah, I needed a, uh, a really wide rim on this bowl for this type of inlay, so I was leaving it as, as, you know, as thick as I possibly could have it. So I'll do the outside, move to the inside, and then I'll go back to the outside. Um, here I'm doing some shear scraping. And as far as I'm concerned, there's, there's no other way to, uh, to really trim the outside of a bowl. Yeah, it's certainly the, uh, one of the most effective ways to trim uh, the outside of the bowl anyway. Again, I'm using three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca. There's a link in the description below for 10% off your next order. And so the way I like to sand is uh, I start at 60 grit, lathe forward, drill in reverse. And if you find you're getting a little divot in the very base of your bowl, uh, if you look at the sanding pad, it's moving past center. It's, I'm not stopping right at the very center of the bowl. I'm moving past it. So yeah, if you, uh, if you sand like that, you shouldn't end up with a little divot in the very base of your bowl. Just keep going past center. Now here around the outside, Still lathe running forward, drill in reverse. As you can see, it just kicks up a ton of dust. So I've reversed the lathe direction now and the drill is going forward. Uh, this drill that I'm using I think is 2400 RPM so ideally you should be spinning your lathe at 1200 RPM.
Again, if you watch the base of the bowl, I always go by, I always go past it. I don't stop right on the, the very base of the bowl. Getting ready to cut the groove in the uh, the rim. So this is a 3 16th inch, 3 16th inch parting tool made by Crown. And I like I said earlier, I wanted a really wide um, inlay here. I really was hoping for this rim to maybe be about a quarter of an inch thicker. It would have been uh, would have been better for what I had what I had planned on doing. So again, this is a uh, wood bowl finish by General Finishes. Uh, the first coat, I put it on really, really heavy. I really want it to uh, saturate the wood. And it's really important to seal uh, the end grain on birch. Birch is very, very uh, porous, and it will really, if you happen to get a CA glue run on the end grain of one of these bowls, uh, you may not be able to sand it out. Uh, that's not the case in walnut or hard maple. Uh, soft maples could probably in the same category as birch. So just put it on real heavy, glued in the groove. That way the glue doesn't wick out through the end grain and stain the outside of the bowl. And that typically goes in my clean room overnight, and then I do the inlay the next day. Here I'm prepping my inlay materials. Uh, you know, this is soapstone, and I just used, you know, a hammer and a steel plate and kind of smashed it all up and put it through a strainer. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. I do like putting it through a fine strainer, and you can also use that's a four pound little maul that I have. It's got a big flat face on it, so it's good for crushing materials as well. Again, cutting branches. Um, we want to put branches in the rim of this along with uh, the copper pipe. So you're going to need a bunch of branches that are the right size. Luckily, I kiln dry everything, and uh, so I've got a pretty decent selection of them. So I really wanted to do kind of a zigzag pattern in here, but uh, the rim just wasn't wide enough. So I decided to take all of the copper pipes and put them against the outside um, portion of the rim. That way they're all even that way. And maybe I could have offset them as well. So ideally these copper pipes would have been uh, just a little bit um, taller than the groove. Uh, but they were cut a long time ago and so uh, it's too late for that now. And I didn't want to make the inlay any deeper because then you're using a lot of CA glue and, and soapstone. And of course, you're know, working your way around, you're always wondering if it's going to work out. And just like the uh, the giveaway, the 15,000 subscriber giveaway bowl, it didn't. But I just simply spaced them out, and to look at it, you wouldn't even really know. And I put some larger branches in to try and take up some of that room as well. Again, Starbond Thin, link in the description. And Accelerator. That way you can uh, set the glue and then move on with your project. So I'm going to set these in place first and then sand them back. And then once they're flush with the surface of the bowl, then I'll put the inlay in. Or I should say the soapstone. Again, these are 60 grit. PSA uh, discs from sandpaper.ca. I'll put those on my random orbital sander, my air-powered random orbital sander. And yeah, I want to cut them back flush with the surface with the lathe off first. And then um, yeah, once I get down close to the surface, then um, I turn the lathe on and sand them nice and flat. Here I'm putting in the soapstone. 
I got a nice clean piece of paper down to capture any material that goes over the edge. And I'll pack it in there. I just tap it on the tap the bowl on the side with a screwdriver, and that is usually more than enough to uh, tap it down and get the voids out of it. Again, this is the thin CA from Starbon. You have to use the thin here. Nothing else will work. Now, this is a good example of why I sealed the, the bowl. If those glue runs were on raw wood, I would have had to sand that for a long time, a lot, cut a lot of that bowl away to get that cleaned up. So yeah, it's the next day and um, I'm cutting this back with 60 grit again. There's really no point in sanding it any higher grit until you get uh, all the inlay filled in here. Again, this is the second filling. And this second application of thin CA. Back on the lathe and cut it back again. And just keep doing it until you get all your voids full. I was actually really fortunate after the second filling it was good. Uh, so here I'm sanding from 120 to 400. I went to 400 because of the copper pipe actually. And usually when I hit 320 I'll start doing the inside edges and outside edges of the, of the rim. Take away any sharp spots. Now these long glue runs, um, I find it's best to use these dipple discs and I'm using 320 there and I'm just cutting them, the majority of it off before I decide to turn the lathe on and blend it all in. It just works better that way. It's very surprising how tough CA is. Here's the second coat. Wood bowl finish by General Finishes. I'm using uh, a rag from my wife's pajamas, <laughs> if you're curious. But it's cotton and it was, you know, it was kind of wore out. So there's no lint with it at all. So they make uh, great, lay, um, great rags for putting finishes on. So anyway, it's early in the day. I'll put this coat of finish on and then I will put this in my clean room and I'll put another coat on uh, before I in today and uh, in the morning I should be able to cut this off finish the bottom and finish the video up nice stuff I find when I put the, uh, the finish on the outside of the bowl I like to put the lathe in reverse just seems easier. This is still a penetrating coat because the first coat, well, probably the majority of it gets sanded away. And I don't wipe off any coats after the first coat. Yes, yeah, so this actually took four coats to do. Uh, here I'm back using the parting tool to part this off of the waste block. Again, this is the only time that I get nervous, but it's surprising how strong that um, hot melt glue is. I just finished it off with the saw. And I'm fortunate enough to have a vacuum chuck. So that's what this is. For doing the bottoms of the bowls. Very, very effective, great tool. If you do a lot of bowls, it's it's definitely worth getting. Again, back with the 5.8's David Allsworth gouge. Just be careful that you don't end up sliding up the the side of your bowl as that would not be good. Again sanding from 180 to 320. 
I find that's usually all you need for the base of the bowl, the very bottom of the bowl. There, got the signature on, first coat. I usually only have to put two on the, the very bottom of the bowl because it's all side grain. All right, so that's it for the video. Uh, I'll bring you in for a last little look at this. And again, this is spalted birch with birch branches, copper pipe, and black soapstone. Uh, there's actually links in the description below for the products that I use in this video. Uh, so make sure you check them out. Uh, this piece is actually 11 by four. And um, birch is a very common wood that I use up here in Eastern Ontario, in Canada. And um, it's kind of, the only knock on it is it's kind of bland. So what I like to do is get logs, seal them up, set them aside for a year, year and a half. And when I see mushrooms growing on the outside of them, I know that inside the bowl, or inside the log, there's actually some spalting going on. It's kind of a battle against the bugs who gets there first. So I, I try to keep a close eye on it because um, I certainly don't want things to get full of bugs either. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it didn't bore you. I know these, uh, these inlays might be boring some people, but next week is my resin journey. So next week, I'm actually gonna do a resin project. I've never done resin before. Uh, I've watched a ton of videos and um, anyway, I've set myself up for success, but we'll see. Uh, you never know. I'm sure there's going to be some failures along there. So, you know, you can, you can kind of follow along my journey and we'll figure this thing out together. Uh, what else? 15,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. Don't forget about that. Once I get 15,000 subscribers, I'll draw a name. You just have to subscribe to my channel and have an open profile so they know that you've done so because I can't pick your name unless you do. And I will ship this worldwide to the winner. Um, Instagram, Facebook, at Sprague Woodturning, uh, sandpaper.ca, and Starbond Adhesives, 10% off your next order. There's a link in the description below. Uh, just use code inlaygym at checkout. And um, that's it. So, um, Anyway, it should be interesting. I, I, can't, I can't wait to actually get into this resin work. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. And don't forget that bell. See ya.